uh, bacon cheeseburger fries. So let's talk about some VFX. First VFX in the video is me going nuts with the shotgun. Now the effect for the shotgun blast is the exact same as the one we do for our standard muzzle flashes, which there's a tutorial for right here. Um, but basically the only difference is we add in a sparky like black powder rifle hit. It's a standard thing where it's one frame of muzzle flash with smoke, as you see right here, and then we add in the, this spark element, which is like 12 frames long. And so when you add up the, the initial blast with the sparks, with the smoke, you get the completed effect. And then for the, for the video, we basically just did that over and over and over again. For the next effect, the raining Priuses that came down and crushed the guy, we basically went to uh, turbosquid.com and downloaded a free model of a Prius. And so the first thing I have to do is retexture it, and I'd already actually done that for the Return of the Jedi A-Holes. So basically recycled that, brought it into 3DS Max, made six clones of the car, and put them up about 50 feet above where, the, uh, where my camera was set up, and then opened up a plug-in Rayfire and used that to simulate the cars falling and bouncing off each other. I was particularly excited about doing the helicopter effect because we actually got to animate it wonking. I mean, normally when you do helicopters, you make, them, you make them fly and you make them do the normal thing, but this time we actually had an excuse to make it wonk out. The first step to this shot is to do 3D motion tracking, which is basically a process which does a whole bunch of tracking points and tracks where your camera is going so you can get an object to completely lock into the scene. After that, I bring that camera into 3ds Max and animate the helicopter coming down in it and, and moving across. And because I've already tracked the camera, it's going to stick in there and lock completely with the camera. And the key to getting good looking CG is to set up the environment properly. One, you need to get the sun coming from the right direction. And then two, you need to get the reflections to properly come from the rest of your scene. Since it's angled up and I can't actually see the stuff that we're reflecting, I went onto Google Maps and I took a screenshot basically of, of the aerial satellite view of the area and put that texture onto a box beneath the helicopter. And that gives it the realistic look. The no clip effect. So we have here a clip of Heldine running up to the car and then freezing in place. And then we had her walk forward so we get the shadow going down the side of the car. And then with the shot where she's freezing in place, export that frame, pull in the Photoshop, cut her out, animate her going down, then you have a clean plate. I spawn in, which is me just running there and jumping and then fading in and when I'm in midair, pretend to get a shot. Brandon does the same, another take of me doing the same thing. Wherever I'm overlapping with Brandon, we auto roto. And then for the hits, basically our standard blood hits on the body. A ground hit consists of a bullet hit decal, smoke, and also a wall hit for the form particle effects. And then for the smoke and the wall hits, turn those into 3D layers, rotate them, and then put them onto the ground, set the blending mode to subtract, so then that's the shadow for it, blur it, bring the opacity down to match other shadows in the scene, and that's basically the full ground hit. For my fall here, I was able to go bigger than usual because underneath my mask, I put a knee pad to protect the back of my head. The number one thing that gets hurt when you take these falls is you hit your head into the ground. So by putting that there, I was able to go bigger and not worry about my injuries. For the wide pan across the street, we basically set the camera up on the roof and had three different angles, left, center, and right. Lock it down on the right side, have people do things and make sure they don't overlap with each other. And then in After Effects, mask out each individual person. The only thing you have to make sure of is nobody cross from the left side to the center or the center to the right. You take those three angles in After Effects and make one really big, long, wide shot. Shot me separately looking at everything and then cut me out and basically just pan the camera across and move me a little bit over. And that's basically it.